what are some of the differences between a green cheek conure and a cockatiel? Hi, I'm Kaylin, the author of The Parapolis Bond. Please be sure to get your copy on Amazon today so you have your handbook to having a blissful bond with your parrot. I have 22 species of parrots. I love parrots. I love sharing my bliss. I love talking about parrots. If you want to be inspired and learn about parrots as I learn too, welcome to my channel. I'm so thrilled to have you here. And if you've been here before, thanks for being a regular. I love hanging out with you guys and I love reading your comments. Today's comment asked about the difference between a green cheek conure and a cockatiel, which I think is a fantastic question, especially since those are two out of the like three or four most popular parrot pet species. So today I have Tulum and Monkey with me and they are more tame than the green cheeks behind me and they are going to be doing a pretty good job I think of showing you that green chiconia is a little more uh, flock oriented. But first let's talk about number one, what similarities these guys have with cockatiels. Now, my cockatiels aren't out here too because I'm afraid my green chiconias might be aggressive and go after them. So, number one, the biggest similarity is that this is one of the best pet parrots. These are two of the best pet parrots, cockatiels and green chiconias, that I think that you could have. They are, um, you could say, loyal. They're really interested in people. They really bond with their humans. When they're well taken care of, they can uh, live for 10, 20, 30 years deep in a house or an apartment. A lot of similarities, a lot of things that are gonna make them easy to take care of, easy to have in your life, and provide a lot of joy and bliss. Now, what are some of the differences between them? One of the biggest differences is going to be in their personalities. Actually, Tulum is doing a fair job of showing you some aggressive behavior. She's kind of going, this is my space, this is my territory, don't mess with me. I would say that cockatiels are gentle to a fault. Cockatiels are these amazing, sweet, soft, fluffy, crested, beautiful um, parrots that are so sweet and gentle. Could they bite you? Yes. Are they likely to? No. They're just like really sweet to a fault. And what I mean by that is like, I don't usually see them defend themselves. That makes me uncomfortable because I'm always like cautious with my cockatiels because I don't want anything to happen to them. On the flip side, green chiconiers are like active to a fault. Now you can't say that all green chiconiers are super aggressive and Tulum isn't really, she's kind of being like super aggressive right now because she's out here in the front lanai and she's kind of like this isn't her time out here so there's other birds out here and she's kind of like what's going on but um green cheek conyers they they can easily default as she's illustrating to you that uh they you know trouble like they're not afraid to stand up and yeah, kind of put up the dukes so that's like, you know, and I'm not saying that they're gonna get in all nasty fights, but I'm saying that they will very quickly act the way she's acting. I also find, at least in my cockatiels, that they aren't as flock oriented. In other words, Luna Love, um, who is like my first cockatiel and who I adore, I have two of her babies. She doesn't really bond with the babies. She has her mate, she's well bonded with him, but she doesn't really connect with the budgies that live with them or the other cockatiels, <coughs> even though, like I just said, they're her babies. Green cheek conures, on the other hand, they will be extremely bonded with their one mate. And then on top of that, they really also bond with the flock. If you look right behind me at my flock of green cheek conures, you can see that they're really used to being with each other, but so they haven't quite paired off. 
And because of it, they really are maintaining more of that flock oriented um, position. I expect that they'll pair off, we'll see, but they're really good at being a flock. I think it would be really hard to have, for example, a budgie or a cockatiel and two or three green sheep conyers. It wouldn't be that hard to have two or three cockatiels and or budgies and one or two green cheeks, like that might be okay. But because these guys are more flock oriented, when they are with their flock, they get into more of a green cheek on your mindset. And at that point, I feel like they could easily become more active, assertive, even aggressive, and could be a little problematic with other parrots. So that would be something to really keep in mind with them and to really watch. Another personality aspect is that cockatiels, I feel, tend to be more mellow. They'll spend more of their day kind of hanging out, and it's not to say that they aren't playful or anything like that. I just feel like they are a more mellow parrot in comparison to a green cheek conure. If you watch the green cheeks behind me, you'll see that they're going to be more active. They just, you know, it's not to say that they don't sit and hang out as well. I just feel like they have more energy, and I feel like they're a more active parrot. It doesn't mean that one's better writer or wronger. <laughs> I'm just saying that that is a difference between them. <clears throat> like I said before, another thing is that these guys are more likely to bite. Cockatiels, they're not gonna not bite you, they're less likely to bite you. Like I said, they sort of tend to not even defend themselves necessarily, generally speaking. Whereas with green cheek conures, I feel like they go through a phase, a biting phase, and I've had people say the same thing to me, that yes, um, you know, you kind of have to weather that storm, which could be a little vampire-like, you could get a little cut up, but when you weather the storm with them, they get past the phase. Sometimes they just have to like get through the biting if you're good at not reacting, or other times when they're about a year old and they get more mature, they kind of learn to bite less. They might bite because they're used to being fed and they think that you're like a parent and they expect you to feed them. They might bite to try to get your attention. They might bite because they just don't quite know the strength of their bite yet. But as they get older, I feel like it disappears. But it is a difference and it is something that you have to just kind of be willing to like put up with <laughs> while they're going through that. Cockatiels, I don't think I've ever really heard anyone say that and I've never had my cockatiels do that to me. Another really big difference is that these guys will talk. One thing that's funny is um, all parrots will sort of get, especially if they're flock oriented, they will get a group kind of like um, secret lodge handshake sound that they'll say to each other and that's kind of like when they say that to each other it means that they're in the groups. My kaiks who were squawking before, for example, they do the and that, you know, that's their call and that's their, their sound to each other. These guys, theirs is, hi Abby. They don't all do it, but some of them do it and it's it's really cute and funny. So green cheek conures can develop the ability to talk and they will talk in a green cheek conure voice. It's not like an African gray or like an Amazon parrot that almost sounds human or sounds absolutely human or like a specific human in the case of an African gray. Mm -hmm. Cockatiels on the other hand, I think I've heard some cockatiels talk, but generally speaking, what you're gonna hear is singing, especially from the males, sort of like a whistly, singy little sound and it's really sweet. And so, when we talk about which one would I choose or which one should you choose, I think it's gonna come down to the lifestyle choice that you want, like whether or not you wanna put up with being bitten, possibly for a year, maybe not at all. Whether you want more of that whistling, um, singing, if you have a male cockatiel, because I've never heard about females do that, or if you wanna, or if you wanna try to um, teach your green cheek conure to talk. Those are gonna be some of the lifestyle differences. <clears throat> Next, one of the other differences is going to be in their diet. Green cheek conures need a maintenance diet, for example, with my Psittacus pellets that I feed my parrots. The maintenance means that they're not like a macaw, they don't get extra nut fat. And they're not like a cockatiel 
whose diet is a little different because in the wild, cockatiels belong to the cockatoo family and in Australia, they're gonna be on the ground looking for grasses and seed grasses quite a bit. In your home, while your cockatiels may go down to the ground and like they do that, do that, they tend to fly up. They're more arboreal, so that they're gonna be up in the trees kind of thing looking for food. And so that is gonna be a difference. Depending on what kind of pellets you have, if you give your parrot pellets, which hopefully you do because you don't want to give them a seed-based diet, neither of these two species, neither the green cheek conure nor the cockatiel should have a seed-based diet. Cockatiels can have a parakeet seed mix, which has more, um, well, what it doesn't have is what they put in the cockatiel mix, which is sunflower seeds. I would keep sunflower seeds as something that I dispense. I would, I don't give that to any of my parrots in their regular diet. So the cockatiels, they can have the parakeet seed mix, which is mostly millet as they like, or, you know, you could supplement their diet with it. But the, my green cheeks, they would only get seeds during the seed seasons, like winter and spring when things are starting to sprout, I'm sprouting things for them that's going to be t the time that they're going to get it i'm going to be a little more liberal with my cockatiels but basically both of these are going to get fresh vegetables neither of them are going to be given um, a lot of fruit if any especially really sweet fruits because they're really high in fructose and these are birds that can turn those fruit sugars into fat and cause them problems so i wouldn't do that with either of these and like I said, they would be getting different pellets if you're giving them a um, diet like Psittacus that has species specific pellets. It would be dangerous to have like one of each in my home, two cockatiels. You know, I might even feel safe with two conures. I would not feel safe letting these guys out with however many cockatiels. I, I would really worry. This many conures, green cheek conures, it's too many and they'd be like, we own everything and I think that would be trouble. But if you have one of each, I don't think you're gonna have a problem. I would always watch them when they're out of their cage though. The lifestyle difference is gonna come down to the cockatiels, it's very important to note that they are a dander producing parrot. That means that the way that these green cheeks um, take care of their feathers is that they produce an oil that they use to preen their feathers with their uh, beak and they put the oil all the way through their feathers. Whereas the cockatiels, they're gonna produce a powder that is used to create incredibly soft feathers. And so if you like petting a soft parrot, the cockatiel may very likely be the parrot for you. Mine don't really like to be pet and I've noticed people saying that and so that might be something that's happened as they've sort of gotten more used to humans. Maybe they've liked petting less, I don't know. When I first got my first cockatiel, my husband was like, I've never heard of a cockatiel that doesn't wanna be pet. And my cockatiel will let me know by beaking me, but never biting me. But she's just, you know, Rah! like I said, no, 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 don't pet me. I'm like, okay, no pets for her, no touchy. That's what I call it. Whereas green cheek conures, they tend to like to be pet. They tend to like to be loved. They're like I said, they're out here, so they're a little like, ah. Um, and so that's a very big difference. If you're allergic, if you have like asthma or something like that, a cockatiel may be a really uh, undesirable choice for you. In that case, the green cheek conure might be desirable. Do other species like green cheek conures produce anything? Yes, yes they do. You're still going to get some stuff. If you do hand out some um, parakeet seeds, you're gonna get some shells and they kind of can turn into like little snowflakes of shells, um, seed shells. But are you gonna have nothing? No, it is gonna produce a little bit. It's just not near the same. See what I mean? They tend to be a little more active and that kind of thing. Um, so that is something to look out for, but I don't think you're gonna have a problem with the green cheek on here. And you can always get a HEPA filter, which is gonna help keep your air clean. So the, um, the ability to see a cockatiel's crest and see it go up and they're so expressive that way that's kind of really magical and that's something that your green cheek conure isn't going to offer you but your green cheek conure in some ways i'm going to say is going to be more bonded just because they're more pair oriented and so you could see like they're a little more i don't know like i feel like the green cheek conures they're more active i feel like they're more engaged i feel like you, one of the lifestyle choices is 
if you picked a green chicano, you'd have to be able to give them more time. And that's not to say that you shouldn't give your cockatiel time. I'm just saying that these guys are a little more dependent on their pair, on their bond. And especially if you only have one green, green chicano, they're gonna need more time than the cockatiel. I still think that they really need a com companion because they're still flock animals, but these guys tend to be even more so. So that really, I think that those things are the things that I would really look to. The biting, the dander, um, the diet, the sound that you want, and and then you're going to be able to give yourself the ability to make a better choice and give yourself like really hopefully the research, you can research a little more and get a really good idea. But I can't really imagine that you're gonna go wrong with either of these species. Like I said, these are, these are three of the, sorry, two of the most popular, the four most popular species, as I understand it, are gonna be budgies, cockatiels, green chicanas, and African gray parrots because they're such great talkers. Of course, the price difference creates a split, like, <laughs> you know, because these guys are all gonna be less expensive, and that actually is a difference. Your cockatiels, generally speaking, they're gonna be like around $200, depending on where you are in the world or in the US. I know that in the US they can also be three to $400. The green cheek conures, they're gonna be around 400, going up to about 1,000, 1,600, if you want one of the beautiful new sun cheeks, which is like a lighter, sunny looking, orangey, yellowy sorta of ish, green cheek conure with like, almost like the cockatiel's yellow cheek, like those are like on the high, high end right now. But so you are gonna have a difference in price there too. I did forget about that. But as far as cages go and the space they take up in your home, they're pretty comparable. I hope that helps you get a really good sense. Now, if you have a green chicanier by any chance, I was really shocked to learn that green chicaniers can have seizures. And we had a green chicanier named Tink who had some um, neurological damage which was why she was given to us. And so we developed Tink's must have parrot relief. It is CBD in hemp oil, which really helped reduce Tink's seizures. If that's something that you're interested in, check out parrotbliss.com for Tink's parrot relief. The CBD in hemp oil offers the right balance of omegas because every parrot needs some fat. And so when you have parrots that aren't <coughs> Nut fat eaters, you want to make sure that you're giving them really good fat like hemp oil because it's got the right balance of omegas. Um, and you also want to make sure you're really giving them good stuff to do things like support a strong immune system so that you have a blissful parrot because a happy, healthy parrot is a more blissful parrot that you can bond with. Thank you for joining me in this blissful video. I will catch you next time.